Hi Motley Fool One members, new and veteran members. Tom Gardner, your Fool One advisor. I had a great opportunity this afternoon to sit down with Michael Lewis, one of my favorite writers. His new book, Flash Boys, which I think is an excellent book, an excellent narrative, another great narrative from Michael Lewis, in this case about the financial system. So the first check-in for you on the interview is Michael's thoughts on the high-frequency trading business. It's a term of art that really didn't hit the newspapers or the public consciousness until maybe 2009 when, when a Goldman Sachs programmer was labeled a Goldman Sachs high-frequency trading program and was arrested by the FBI for taking Goldman's code. And uh, it's, not, it's not easy to define. I guess you could say, if you want to be the loose definition, it would be, it would be trading by computer algorithm at very high speeds. Microseconds. What's a microsecond? <laughs> I mean, right? I mean, it's a, it, milliseconds. I mean, in fact, at this moment, the cutting edge high frequency trading firms are talking about picoseconds, mm. and, which is worse than nanoseconds. Mm. Uh, and so to put that in context, um, I'm told that a blink of an eye is, takes between 100 and 200 milliseconds. Mm. Uh, and a millisecond is a thousand, there's a thousand microseconds in a millisecond, mm. a thousand nanoseconds in a microsecond, and a thousand picoseconds in a, mm. right, so it gives you an idea. Mm. I like to think I can blink my eye faster than that. See? <laughs> I, 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 I did it. You are so ready to you trade. Just, you, you are ready, ready to ready trade. To go. So the way the high frequency traders work is they're making lots of little mar markets in small amounts of shares in all, all the stocks in New Jersey. They don't actually want to own these things. Mm. They're trying to tease out information. They're using, making the markets to tease out information about what investors are doing so they can react to it. Mm. So they're listing 100 shares available on either when side. an order is coming for 10,000 Right. Shares. So they find it. Ah, so I want to get on the other side of that. I want to get in front of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but with the, the risk, the big risk for them is that the whole market goes down and they're sitting here dangling out 100 share orders in 4,000 different stocks and they get hit and they'll own a bunch of, they own, you know, all that stock. So they are very sensitive to overall market movements. They need to know market pop and market not. And the market popping and the market going down first registers in the futures in Chicago. So they get the market the direction, the directional signal from Chicago to New Jersey, say, it says get out of the market. You know what happened in the flash crash? My guess is, it's not been well explained, mm -hmm. but my guess is that's how it starts. It's someone that it, it does start in the futures market and then the next thing is all the people who are supposedly the intermediaries in the stock market just pull out. You know, I think a lot of people, myself included, initially thought high frequency trading was profitable because of speed and that was it, that they had some they had some. Well, they, why they had why some, would speed be valuable all by itself? I, well, I, I, I was com going to combine it with that they had their beliefs about where the market was going based on their fundamental research. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Right. So you're, I, I don't so, feel I'm a fool. I don't feel uncomfortable when you laugh at that. That's very sweet. No, this no, is why but, this book was so it's, valuable to me, very, Michael. But this is very, I mean, good. I didn't know what the high frequency trader advantage was. They have speed. They're there first. But what if they're wrong? So a couple of this. So two things. One is. Their, their, their obsession is with speed, right? With microseconds advantages. And two, the fact that what we know of them, they never experience a day of trading losses. That every day is profitable. Mm -hmm. Thousand days mm -hmm. of no trading losses. Mathematically impossible unless. So how does that, unless you're basically gaming a market. Mm -hmm. Unless, that is, that is not, there's no, you can't be taking market risk. You can't be making judgments mm -hmm. about stocks. Mm -hmm. No matter how good you are as a money manager, mm -hmm. you will have loss, you mm -hmm. will have stocks that go down some days, mm -hmm. right? Of course. Of course. So they're doing something different. Mm -hmm. oh, well, this is why this <laughs> book was so valuable yeah. to me. We next talked about the impact that flash trades, dark pools, high frequency trading, has on us as long-term business-focused investors? I am the most passive investor there is. I, I hardly, I, I, t I take very little interest in it. I don't trade and, and I hold long-term. And so the scalping side of things matters very little to me. I, I mean, I'm not losing that much money. However, this is a system-wide tax on investment, on investment capital. And I don't know what it is. It's 20 billion or 30 billion, whatever it is a year. It's a significant sum of money. So. Uh, that's bad for the economy. Productive enterprise pays more for capital because of this. Mm -hmm. Now, that's in a way trivial in real, it compared to the instability caused in the system by the complexity required by high frequency traders and imposed on the, and demanded of the exchanges by high frequency traders. So what is the instability? What do flash crashes and NASDAQ outages and all this lead to? It leads to mistrust in the investment public. Mm -hmm. Why on earth are fewer Americans is there a decline of individual American investment in the stock market 
during the, one of the greatest bull markets in history. It's because people don't trust it. I mean, people are, there is, there is mistru uh, understandable mistrust of this market. It's an unstable market. So here's what's the, the funny, cost of the mistrust? Well, well here's the you funny dynamic. Me. I mean, I don't, I don't want to put you in the position of being incredibly selfish, but I'm going to for the fun of it. Doesn't all of that actually benefit you as a passive long-term investor? I mean, I don't want to make it all about each of us in, as an individual, but if so much of the financial machinery and the people that are behind it, which are becoming fewer and fewer as the machines take over, is focused on trying to slice down the time and the frequency that they can, they can activate trades and the information they can get to, yeah, to to just nibble and be a parasite on every transaction. There's so much attention there. Isn't that, doesn't that open up a great, and, and if the rest of the marketplace is therefore distrustful, well, doesn't I, that create a great oppor long-term uh, opportunity for a long-term passive investor like you? I have to think about that one. I mean, I, don't, yeah, uh, I think that my- I'm not I, saying it's a good thing. No, I mean, right, yeah. the, so my, re my reaction, my basic reaction is probably not because what I'm thinking is, all right, I'm a long-term passive investor. What am I actually doing as a long-term passive investor? I'm making an investment in the future profits of, the, of American corporations, of the, or the corporations in my portfolio. Um, and those future profits are going to be badly affected by an unstable market if they're operating in an unstable market. I mean, it's just not good. So, but, but as a stock picker, if I was a long-term stock picker, maybe it creates more, if fewer people want to be in the marketplace, maybe it creates a bargain, a bargain or two for me. I don't know. I just don't know. But I don't. I but think but the overall instability yeah. and, and loss of trust in the market system. So can I add one more thing sure. as a cost? And I don't think it's trivial. So if you create an industry on Wall Street that sucks in the brightest, best in the brightest, whose job is basically to game the system and scalp investors, and you create that as a model for success in this country, and like that's what people, kids who graduate from Princeton, Harvard, and Yale think is successful, what is the effect of that instead of doing something actually useful? Toward the end of the interview, we had a really interesting conversation about what Michael perceives to be the coming war between Main Street and Wall Street. Are you an optimist that things are going to be, transparency will win, and that the market will be more stable for investors? I think it's gonna be a war. I really think that we're, it's gonna be an ugly, long war. And I think that Brad Katsuyama and IEX, the, I, I think Brad Katsuyama is Frodo Baggins in Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. I think he's created, he's sort of like, he's, he has, antagonize Mordor, mm. and the orcs are rising on Wall Street. Mm. And on the other side, he's got this Fellowship of the Ring thing with investors, big investors who are su supporting him. And there's a, the war is between, ultimately, big investors who manage little people's money mm. and uh, the system that is exploiting the money. Mm. And I, I don't know where it ends up. I don't actually know where, where it ends up. I do think that it's, it's not going to just go away quietly. It's not, the book's not going to be published and then people are going to forget about it because they've got all these investigations going on. Mm -hmm. And I do think also that if the world changes, it won't be because of the book. It'll be, it will be the people, it, but IEX could be the lever, that you create this fair exchange. It really is, and it's really a fair exchange. Mm -hmm. And you're committed to restoring trust in the financial markets. You get, the, what you do is you give people a choice. And so, all of a sudden they're making, it's not one dark pool versus another or one exchange that's sold out to HFT versus another exchange that's sold out to HFT. You actually have a fair place that's operating in the interest of investors that you force a choice into the, onto the world that hasn't existed before. And that's very seditious. Purity, so an opportunity to have a purely transparent but Yes, it, there's no reason it can't market, be. I think there's course. no So I do think, I actually, I think they're gonna win. Mm. I don't know how, but I do think. Mm. I mean, I have, I can imagine several paths to change. I mean, I can tell you what I think the most likely is. Mm -hmm. The most likely is one of the public exchanges, possibly the New York Stock Exchange, says it's actually, this thing is turning fast. The old business model of deriving our revenues from high frequency traders is gonna collapse. Let's buy IEX and make them the New York Stock mm -hmm. Exchange. Let's get yeah. the reputational so, win. Yes. And just, Huge reputational yeah, so win. They do, someone, so Goldman Sachs has been the first mover in the banks to get behind IEX and no one else has followed. I love that part of the reason that could be true is because they realize they can't catch up technologically. That's right. That's right. So they're like, that's your point. Let's that's play the point. reputational right. side play of the this. Reputational side Let's side. win so, with what so we have. So there's no reason an exchange, one of the exchanges won't do the same thing. And that would, the, the natural one to do it is a New York Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. Michael, I know, by the way, so in that scenario, you are our J.R.R. Tolkien. We hope you're safe out I there thought, writing I, about this. I thought I was Gandalf. Okay, you're Gandalf. I love that, but you're <laughs> such a youthful Gandalf. 
I think Flash Boys is an outstanding book. I highly recommend it, even if you're not deeply interested in high frequency trading, which I'm not, or dark pools, which I'm not. Um, this gives you a better understanding of how the system works and perhaps doesn't work and a bunch of great characters. And I think you'll see a couple of really awesome fools make appearances in the financial system doing the right thing full on. Mm -hmm.